His anointing is empowering the kingdom of cares about me. I thank you that you care, Father, that she's yours, that you own the cattle of a thousand hills, that the gold is yours, yours, the silver is yours, and she's your child. I thank you that you can speak to anything and anybody that will make provision for her. I thank you for it now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That your father went through in college, and you had no idea because you weren't even born. But that same spirit is trying to drive you through the same things. But I heard the Lord said, I'm going to cancel the assignment, and I'm going to cancel it through love. And the way he's going to do that, he's going to show you complete strangers are going to walk up to you, Lisey, in grocery stores. You're going to go to the cash register, think you're going to pay, and that person is going to say, the Lord told me to pay for this. And they're going to pay for it. Then you're going to be heading somewhere else. It looks like a movie theater. And a complete stranger is going to say, the Lord told me to pay for this movie. And they're going to give you more than enough money to pay for the movie. And it's going to happen time and time again. Then I see a person that says, the Lord spoke to me to buy your wardrobe. And they're going to take you shopping. And all of it is going to be designed to show you the love of God. Because he's going to show you that you are mine as a little girl. And you're still mine. There's nothing you can't go through that will make you not belong to him. He marked you as his. And I see this little girl, now, I'm looking at you, but I see this little girl in the pew, and her feet can't even touch the ground. But she's sitting there, and people have left the sanctuary, and she's saying, Daddy told me to don't get up. Daddy told me to don't get up. And she's just sitting right there. And the Lord says, she heard Daddy God then, and she'll hear Daddy God now. Daddy God says, I've got you, Lisa. You're not alone. Second Kings 3, 11, and we'll read all the way down to the 27th verse. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the kings of Israel's servants answered and said, here is Elisha, a son of Shishphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother 
And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hands of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth for whom I stand, surely were it not that I regarded the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that you may drink, both you and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. And you shall smite every fenced city. Let's back up. I want to stop at the 18th verse. Thank you, sound people. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver. Say, he will deliver the Moabites into thy hands. Turn to your neighbor and say, he will deliver my enemy into my hands. If my enemy sin, he will deliver me from it. If my enemy is jealousy, he will deliver me from it. If my enemy is envy, he will deliver. If my enemy is poverty, he will deliver. If it's gossip, he will deliver. If it's backbiting, he will deliver. He will deliver me from my enemy. Now, the key verse that my subject is coming from, verse 15, but now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. I'm using for a subject or topic, bring me a musician. If you bring me somebody that can sing in the beauty of holiness, bring me a singer. Bring me a musician. Bring me somebody that won't play with it, but they'll play under the anointing. The presence of God will show up. You can take your seats. On last night, the spirit of entertainment came in and the anointing came in. Entertainment came in first. The anointing came in second. Entertainment came back in. The anointing overruled entertainment. Because God is not into entertainment. Paul said, not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but of demonstration and of power is what he wanted to know known for. Entertainment is when you're doing it for everybody to look at it and it sounds cute and it looks cute. But God's not in it. When the anointing showed up, now that song, Grace, and they started singing Your Grace and Mercy, and I asked them to change the key, and I don't know a thing about key, but I heard heaven say change the key. So I just shouted out what heaven shouted out and left them to figure it out. They didn't have a clue, but I knew heaven wanted it played a different way and sung a different way. And when we shifted to do it heaven's way, miracles came in the room. Healing came in the room. Deliverance came in the room. The prophetic, spirit of the prophetic came in the room. It is in the anointed psalmist. Elisha was telling this particular king, I have a bad attitude. I don't want to fool with you. I don't want to deal with you. I wouldn't even try to give you a word from God. But if you bring me somebody that can play and bring in the spirit of prophecy, it'll overtake me and I'll prophesy when I don't want to. The spirit of prophecy came in the room. Spirit of healing, deliverance, where people that didn't want to give up stuff decided, I think I'll give it up. It's an anointed that'll show up to make you give up, as Candace Satan said, or make me give up what I never wanted to give up. What you didn't plan to give him, you'll give it to him. That woman came to the well to offer Jesus water, and she had no intention of giving up the men. But when she met Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, she went back to the city and said, come see a man. She went from shacking to evangelizing. She said the one she had wasn't on. She didn't go back looking for him. She didn't go back laying up with him because she was satisfied. When the spirit of prophecy and revelations calls Jesus the spirit of prophecy, when the spirit of prophecy shows up, it answers what you need. It unlocks what's been locking you up. 
It liberates. It reveals the secrets of the heart. And it gives you power. This year, the spirit of prophecy will double in your life. This year, feel for, look for through the music, through the praise. It's not church as usual. It's not singing as usual. That's why we have to have prayer, intercession going first, praying, praising, and prophesying our way into the new year. Keith, Keith, uh, Kenya nailed it in that prayer. I want to jump down and high five and say, gotcha, girl, I'm riding with you. When you do on, on earth as it is in heaven, allowing heaven to pray through you, to decree and declare and say. And I watched as she kept praying until it hooked people that they started joining in. Yes, yes, okay, yes, God, yes. And it set the tone or the pace for the singers to sing. I watched and knew when God was singing through you. you we start out Thanksgiving. End in praise and finally lay down in worship. It's when our will lays down to the will of God. When we surrender every fiber of our being. When she started, Devon started weeping and singing. I realized the Holy Spirit was now singing through her. It was no more about her. It was no more about destiny. It was no more about the praise team. It was all about him. It was no more about the musicians. It was all about him. So he couldn't go any other direction. David couldn't go. John couldn't go. Everybody had to go with God. This is the year that we go with him, that we go with the anointing, that we go with his presence, that we go, we allow the praise to carry us. We allow the prayer to set us up and we allow the praise to carry us and carry us until we prophesy to ourselves that while you're singing a song, you start saying, yes, I don't feel no way tired. You slap yourself on the head. You believe and you decree it. You believe and you declare it. You start celebrating what God promised you that he would do. You get the spirit of prophecy that you start declaring that I'm worth marrying. I'm worth being Mrs. I'm worth it. You will not devalue me. I am worth the respect because I'm respected by God. Elisha was using this as an example for us that music can even drive demons away. When you're in a bad mood, a bad attitude, music can drive rage away. Music can drive anger away. Music can drive cursing out. Music can put you in your right mind. When an evil spirit came on Saul, and he was throwing spears. So when you're throwing javelins, when you're raging, when you're angry, when you're upset, when you're throwing javelins, if you can get some anointed music that will play and usher in the presence of God, it will change the mood and the atmosphere in the room. Put your hand on yourself. In this room, he will change the container. That the resistance leaves. You stop resisting the will of God. Elisha didn't want to. Most of the times when we read about Elijah and Elisha, we talk about that great anointing we never look at. These were human beings that just didn't want to be bothered when Elijah said, send the fire. They didn't want to be bothered. Bears eat up the children. He was powerful, but he was moody and treacherous. And bears came. He was slinging that word like a straight race, taking no prisoners. Till one man had common sense when he sent fire over 50 and fire over another troop. The last man said, look, now, you don't even have to come if you don't want to. I don't want to burn up. I just can't go back to him. He stepped to him with respect. It brought him under subjection. So this is the year that we have to understand where humanity is running, the anointing is running also. You'll miss the presence of God if you're busy looking at the flesh and not looking at the anointing. Elisha was a man. You are a human being. You are a person. But under the anointing, when God saddles you and rides you, you become intercession. When God saddles you and rides you, you are the vehicle that he's using to ride through the land to sing through, to play through. So he saddles you and you can no longer be a wild Mustang. You have to surrender to the rider. Tell your neighbor God's riding me. I, fed him, I felt him saddle me. You know when he saddled you when you didn't want to come to church. And he sent out that lasso and 
lassoed you and drug you in. Then he put a saddle on you and said, now I'm going to ride you through this praise. I'll ride you through this word. And you know he's riding you when you said, I'm going to go, but I'm going to have a bad attitude. I'm going, but I'm not going to lift my hands. I'm going, I'll watch my watch, and I'm getting out of here, and I wish somebody would say something to me. And they mess around and say something to you, and you start saying, Shut up, I call song. No, no. You realize he's riding. Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. This is the year that he's going to show you what he can do with your flesh. I knew he was riding Kenya when she stepped down here and she stepped in the glory prayer. And I said, ride on, King Jesus. It's about not my will, but your will be done. Not what you want, not how you feel, not what you're going through. And it's not the year of kingdom of self. It is the year that will oppose the kingdom of self. The kingdom of self said, what about me and what I'm going through and them church people that know, don't understand and this didn't happen and that happened. And they, I, it's about the will of God, regardless of what you're going through and what happened in the past. If you can table it for what he's doing, he'll double up on you this year. Ask somebody, can you afford for him to double your bank account? How would you like for him to double up on your pleasure? Double up on your travel? Double up on your dreams. You were asking for the one dream, and he said, let me double up. Instead of just letting you go to Israel, let me send you back to Rome, too. And how about just coasting along Sicily and Italy? Let me just throw some other things in, because I'm satisfied. And I want to paint your year with what I plan to do the rest of the year. What he started today, he'll close out in December. If you can check your attitude at the door, every single day when you get to the door of your house, check your attitude. When you get to the door of God's house, check your attitude. Simply saying, I don't care how I feel. Not my will, but your will be done. It's all about you. And it's all about the kingdom. Because I expect you to bring me out in order for me to get double. That meant if I go through horrendous things, imagine the double return on that. The minstrel of the musician on last night ushered in. And when I say musician, playing, singing. Had there been a clash, it would have been discord. So it had to be harmonious. It had to be unity. It had to be one accord. Everybody had to come together, flowing together as one man. It could not be someone volleying, saying, I think I should lead that song. He told me to sing this note, but I don't think I want to sing that note. But it had to be God's agenda and God's way. The prophetic anointing came in. Miracles came in. Uh, Hazel said she had gone and had a mammogram. And she hadn't told anyone that the doctor said he found a lump in her breast. But when it was called out, she started dancing. Because she realized it got to be me. And I didn't notice anybody else went to dancing. So it's just like God to go to the room and pick one. So nobody's confused. That's your miracle. People were coming to the altar offering God something he hadn't even asked. Because he said the anointing is present. It's vital that we go with the flow. Do not think this year is a year of just sing what you want to. Listen to what kind of music you'd like to listen to. It is a year that you praise, you pray, and prophecy will happen. You will find that what you said becomes a self-fulfilled prophecy. You started singing that song. Why did you sing that song? Where did that song come from? Um, I wrote it last week. You wrote it last week, but why did you sing it today? Um, it's, it's my prayer. I just, I love it. So that's just what, what my spirit wanted to say. So you were praying and praising. Was any part of that prophesying to you? Yeah, I think all of it. Okay. So you were praying in that song, praising in that song, and prophesying in that song. So any part of that, when she was singing parts of the song, how many of you responded through prayer? How many of you found yourself praising him? That praise is just giving him, yeah, that's right. That's what I want, God. Your hand said it. I know his hands went up in the back. Some people started standing up. How many of you began to claim that? Said, God, that's me. 
yes, yes, yes. Because it was the cry of your heart. So God will give songs from heaven to people on earth to sing it. For the musicians to accompany them, to play along with it. God likes accompaniments. Not just singing it, but for them to play it. So it was set an anointing in the room. And I don't know why, out of nowhere, I looked up and Lindsay was standing at the altar. I was looking in the spirit in one minute. The next minute I thought, hmm, why is he singing at the altar? No one made a public altar call. Not at that moment, I don't think. A public altar. But it was about, I'm responding to heart. What's going on in my heart? God will sing where you are. And this year, he's teaching us how to feed ourselves. How do I feed myself? I can sing myself happy. I can sing myself into the will of God. I can sing myself into conviction. I can sing my soul under submission. I can praise until I get the victory. Those things that we lost sight of, we can get them back. Now, why were you led to sing that song tonight? Um, when Kenya was started to pray. So, now, home run. This is a year that the word of the Lord, I was in Cincinnati, past, I forget which month, Pastor Michelle, Fellowship Church of Praise, had her first women's conference. And when I was sitting there, the Lord said, pray, praise, and prophesy your way into 2014. And then have three days that you just pray, praise, and prophesy. And you will revive people through the word. When you remember the power of praise, they'll be raised. If you drop the P, you're talking about raised. Anytime we start praising God, you know what happened? It takes our mind off our problems, our mind off our situations, our mind off of what we plan to do, our emotions. It, has a, it puts your mind on him. And then once you put your mind on him, then you also get extra pay because while your mind is on him, he blesses you for looking at somebody else and helping someone else. What did you say? You took me on a rabbit check. When she prayed? When, when Kenya was praying, we had a list of songs that we were going to sing, um, but I felt like we needed to go in a different direction. So I you know, went over to Robert, and that's when... I started to, you know, hear the song, fill me up, fill me up, and then the song that I wrote. Okay. And how many people want to be filled up? Lift up. Why don't you stand and lift those hands as you're singing that this time? Fill me up. Because I felt like water bottles that were half filled and it was pouring water into them. It was like water jugs and the waters was coming up. I felt a water of refreshing just go over Lindsay. It was like this clear silhouette came here and he began to pour into his mind. And as he began to pour into the top of his head, I could see it started his feet and just start coming up and up and up and up. I looked back at destiny and I could see water. It looks like it started like a, a whirlwind, a whirlpool in her stomach and it was going around and around and around and it was soothing the seat of her emotions as we were just singing lift those hands and as she as he fills you you're going to find that every crevice every crack every disappointment every hurt every heartbreak all those things that you've just been wearing on your shoulders all those burdens that's been there you're going to wake up in the night season shaking under the power you're going to find yourself saying god you got me again you're holding me because i heard him say i got you where it seemed like the things had you the cares had you you're going to feel the power of god in your being shaking you and you'll wake up with such levels of appreciation dreams that make you laugh instead of cry those people that tried to write you off those people that tried to break you those people that tried to make you feel you weren't worth anything that you'll never measure up i sense him smearing you and greasing you i feel a presence of a new mantle that's on your life that when you took a breath in you begin to breathe in a new life it's like the presence of god that's going to take the stench off that's going to take the pain out that's going to take the struggle out where well, you've been struggling to make it you're going to wake up saying i just feel a freedom that i haven't felt in a long time i feel a joy that i haven't felt in a long time and this time people aren't going to be able to snatch it from you by the stump the thumb of man on you but you're going to realize i've come in 
to my own and it's my time that I have it's my time that I move in this it's my time that I move from this level to that level you're changing levels even right here in the room in the building you're going to another level yes I need this is his name, Eileen. Eileen, I just heard the Lord say, tell her I got her in my hand. I felt him reach for your hand. And when he reached for your hand, he was reaching for her hand. He said, tell her I've got her in my hand. And just like I laid my hands on her and I gave her a miracle in her body, he says, I'm working a miracle in her spirit and a miracle in her emotions. But the enemy is just trying to stab her. And he's really trying to send her into a heart attack, a her into a stroke. But he said, I'm holding her. And he said, even the things that you said, Lord, my sister, he saw you last night as you were hurting over in your sleep saying, God, I need you to do this. I see her lapping this building. I see her jumping up and down and dancing. I see her saying, I thought I would never hold this kind of joy again, this kind of excitement again. And I hear you saying, I told you God was going to do it. I told you that it was going to be all right. And I break that bloodline curse that she's worried about now. In the name of Jesus, that daughter safe God, I thank you that the power of God that was on her, what was hidden from her, is not hidden from you, but you're going to get nothing but the glory out of it. Spirit of prophecy, that spirit of prophecy is going to come out of her mouth again and again. It's going to lift that sister, life that sister. I thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.